Hi, my name is Soren Dienst, and I recently joined the CIO Summit event uh, in the Middle East, hosted, hosted by IDC. I had the honor of speaking there, but also listening to some quite interesting presentations and IDC's view on, uh, on, on IT in general and, and sort of what's, what's, what's going there. Um, they spoke about four pillars. They spoke about cloud, which is no big surprise. They spoke about social working and the mobility around organization, how that, uh, that happens in an in a inspiring, fast and secure way, and how to deal with big data and analytics. Those were sort of the, the four big pillars, but they also spoke a lot about innovation and what's the role of the CIO in the future and how does a CIO effectively um, support the business and so forth. And one of the most, inter of the most interesting uh, times during this event was a panel discussion among three CIOs. And in particular, what I would like to do is uh, show you three video clips that uh, I find very inspiring. And I wanted, I wanted you to hear her voice. Her name is Dr. Awa al Ama. She is the head of IT or the CIO for a government agency uh, in Saudi, the Jedi Municipality. And uh, she heads up 53 uh, very diverse locations. Uh, she runs all of IT, all uh, from both from an operational and a strategic level. And she got some very interesting views uh, that I want to share with you. So here is the first clip where she quickly introduces herself. First of all, I would like to thank uh, IDC for inviting me to take part in this exciting <coughs> forum. Um, as a vice mayor, I report directly to the mayor. Uh, it's more or less the role of a CIO uh, in which I oversee the diff strategy and the implementation of the strategy and the balanced scorecard of the IT. Uh, it's quite exciting. It's been very, very exciting, uh, not only because I'm the only woman, but because I've been lucky to be there for four years, so I've witnessed the two floods that everybody has heard about. So that's quite interesting. Thank you. Oh yeah, and one more important point, she's actually the first and highest ranked woman to hold a leadership position in, uh, in IT in, uh, in a Saudi, and to hold a leadership position in, uh, in IT in, uh, in a Saudi government agency. So the, the, next, uh, the next clip here is, um, where the panel is asked, so what's the future role of the CIO? What's, what's going to change in the next five or 10 years? Uh, how do you view your own role and um, your ability to support whatever your uh, organization is going to do? And uh, listen to this. Five or 10 years. Dr. Arba, perhaps we'll start with you. Um, I strongly <clears throat> believe it's going to change. It's going to change for many reasons. Um, it can be something as simple as, and unrelated to the organization as climate change, uh, I, I'm going back and forth with my story about the floods. Uh, a lot of things that we believe we have settled and we have you know, instilled all of a sudden can change in one day. Uh, uh, for example, we're talking now about increased transparency in organizations. We look around us and we, we see the... ...see the, uh, you know, the Arab Spring and we see what goes on. We see the power of the technology in the Arab Spring, if you look at it. Uh, and being, you know, coming from this technology background, we can see how powerful the tools we are providing to an organization can be. So basically, it's not just a tool of, you know, having a computer. Like 10 years ago, a CIO would be very thrilled if he was able to provide 100 computers to an organization in a small local area network. If you look at it now, this is nothing, you know. Your kid at home can do that with the computers at home if he even needs a local area network now. So everything has changed. I think our role, maybe the most important thing that we really need to do is keep up with the technology and keep up with the, you know, believing in the power of this technology. How are we really going to use it as a powerful tool to empower our organization, our, our people? One of the things we are working on right now is an e-transparency uh, initiative. And when you think of an e-transparency initiative, our idea is to provide as much information to the, to the public about what's going on in our back offices. So when you think of it, technology is really opening up the organization to the world. I'm speaking maybe from an, a, a government perspective because I come from the government, but I believe this is, you know, it's equally as important in the public sector, in the private sector. 
because right now people are participating in you know, creating the new technologies, the new trends. Uh, you need to listen to people. People right now, if you don't listen to them, they don't care about you anymore. So they're not going to be your customer. So I listen to them, they don't care about you anymore. So they're not going to be your customer. So I think our role right now is more, we, we need to move from the back end to the front end and to be friends with our customers. So we need to understand what they're saying, we need to understand what, what they want, and I think this is giving us as CIOs a more powerful role, because we're not just the person that's sitting in the back office and you know working on computers. Right now, and, and maybe yesterday we saw this in, in your new survey, that more, maybe 80% I think, of the surveyed people report directly to the CEO. Why do we report directly? Because now the CEOs know how important technology is. So, of course, this give us, gives us more pressure and it's raising the bar for us and now we need to work harder and harder because we are right now one of the key, maybe the key three people in an organization, internally and externally. We are, you know, the, the one that is dealing with the outside world as well as the one that's dealing with the inside world. Wonderful. So just think about what she said there for transparency. She's all about opening up the organization to the outside world and to the inside world. She's looking at becoming friends with her customer, which I think is a, is a great statement, uh, and empower her organization through technology to change the world. And I very much see a CIO or next-gen CIO that is very much becoming a change agent for establishing this, this agility inside organizations to deal with the new world order and, and the increasing demand on services that he, his or her organization is meeting. So how can we do this when we sell software and solutions and services to, to CIOs? How can we relate to this when we develop our software to really fit into this new picture? I think that's very, a very interesting uh, perspective. This last clip here, the moderator is asking the panel, how do you align yourself with business goals? And what's your way of measuring performance? How do you justify investments? Uh, how do you measure ROI and, 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 and so forth? And uh, let's, hear, let's hear what she's uh, saying to that. How does it work? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, from the, from in, at the municipality, we actually have a, a big strategy, which is a five-year strategy that covers the municipality with all, all aspects. We also have a, a balance scorecard that goes with the strategy, and we have a strategy department that's responsible that is really the owner of the balance scorecard. So basically what they do is they come to each department and we cascade down you know, from the bigger balance scorecard and the bigger strategy into the different departments. Uh, there was one interesting point that was raised yesterday by someone from the government saying well, it's hard to measure ROI mm -hmm. and you know, to justify the cost. You know, this, Actually, the, uh, how we solved this at the municipality, we had a similar problem. So basically what we did is we flipped some of the parts in the balance scorecard. So it's part of our secret innovation, if you will. <laughs> it might not work for every organization, but basically what we did is that if, uh, if you're familiar, how many of the people here are familiar with balance scorecard and use balance scorecard? So, oh, quite a so few. basically, yeah. So in the normal balance scorecard, the finance quadrant is at the top. So basically what we did is that we put the finance quadrant at the bottom. So basically now we have the customer at the top. So our measuring of the success is how satisfied our customers really are. So basically what we do, we keep you know, constant, uh, we, we do a lot of testing with our users and to, to see how satisfied they are with different services or with the overall uh, you know, uh, performance of the municipality. And we have a survey that's online and it's constantly online. We have different polls and we have a constant survey that's a very long one, a very detailed one about the city. So basically that's how we, we keep up with you know, measuring our satisfaction. And uh, I'm also a member of the uh, strategic planning committee at the municipality. And this is a committee that is headed by the mayor and it includes all the heads and you know, the uh, top executives of the municipality. And this uh, committee is dedicated to measuring performance of the different departments and to making sure that the departments are aligned with the strategy. And it's a weekly meeting. It takes place the first hour of every week. So everybody has to be there on Saturday. So that way, being part of you know, that committee, I'm able to see what the different uh, uh, departments really have as needs, what their problems are, what their issues are. Departments really have as needs what their problems are, what their issues are. So when I come to 
to plan my strategy or my, uh, my projects, if you will, for the next year, I already have an idea of what the different departments need. So that makes me you know, in touch. I'm not, uh, we don't work in silos. We basically work across the board. Uh, the other thing is that uh, at the municipality, we have a priority schema that, is, uh, that we use to measure. So basically, when I, I apply at the end of the year, in, uh, in the government, in Saudi government, you have to you know, go and ask for a budget, a yearly budget from the Ministry of Finance. So what we do is that we have a, me a meeting around the sixth month with the budget department where we present to them all the initiatives that we want to do the coming year. So the budget department, they take these initiatives, they run this priority schema, and they see if it matches what the strategy really needs. So they have like, you know, they get numbers out, and then they, they enter all the projects that are coming from the different departments, and they see the highest priority ones that would really positively affect the strategy. And that's how they approve our budget before we go to the Ministry of Finance. Oh, very impressive. Very I think this impressive. last clip very much speaks for itself. Uh, I, I love the way she's uh, viewing or taking this outside in approach. I like the way she's talking about uh, developing or creating customer satisfaction or user satisfaction as the way of measuring her own organization success. Great way of looking at it. We should be asking ourselves, how can we help her drive that agenda? How can we help her establish that framework uh, for our, from our chair? And uh, I know that the data center operator is not asking this type of stuff, but he's part of this. He's part of delivering this uh, user experience agenda. 